Ой. One of several bridges over creeks and they're really ponds. They just have water in them occasionally. But there's a river water course you can see there on the left. All those reeds. There are several bridges that go over it. We do this little loop around this estate here called the Tillage, and this first section is Quiberon Way. I can go directly ahead up there. Success something over a street or avenue. This is Vendetta up Street Avenue, I'm not sure which. So when we get around the top there and come back down it. Going up towards the roundabout sign there and make a left. This is Voyager Drive, I think. And then I go back onto Quiberon Way before going down Vendetta.
in Dither Street. I'm going to go down. This little loop of along Quiberon and down Vendetta, along Quiberon up success and down Quiberon again to the next bridge. That's a bit over a kilometre to the run and it's got a bit of up and down obviously. Not steep hills but hills nevertheless, or rises at least. So hopefully give you a little bit of a hill workout, get your heart rate up a bit. You can see the sun trying to break, break through the clouds there, so I'm not going to go in the easterly direction. I'm going to turn back along a quiver on here and so <coughs> mostly going south then and when I turn up success that'll be west so you try to orient yourself directionally to where I'm going Once we're getting close to finishing this house here, the site's been tidied up and all the builders' waste, or well, most of it, has been taken away. Well, I see there's still some lining inside to do so, it'll be a while yet, I guess, before well, they put all the chip rock up. Doesn't appear as if anyone's going to be working today. Almost at the top of success here. Just trying to see the sign that says uh, Success Street. Uh, how it's been near the street and Success Street. And this is Quiver on Way again. Easterly again, as you can see by the sun on the left hand side, down towards the dog park, and there's another bridge over the uh, water course.
Johnny, you might be able to just see it on the right there. So here's the bridge. We're at 6.87. And it's about, about 6.87 kilometers. And it's about 1.8 kilometers from here to where I parked. And I'll make it about 8.6. So I said 7.8. I think I said seven kilometers, 8.6 it should be time we get there, so a bit further than I had planned. And not too bad for a first day back at it. After, as I said, a whole day sitting in the car, and uh, Sunday I didn't run in Brisbane either. I still after Saturday park run. Sunday rest day and Monday we were travelling coming down here as early as we could. Hello. Morning. Hello doggy. Very, bit of a conundrum what to do with your dog, you know, like this. You know, law says if they're outside a dog park or an off-leash, enclosed off-leash area, they're supposed to be kept on a lead all the time. And that's, I suppose, the safety of other people. But the dogs themselves, they want to get off leading just go running. Our know, dog likes to go under the fence here and go and have a bit of a splash in the water and uh, just like to go off the, the track and smell what's around them and explore. Sometimes we let him do it, other times we're concerned getting a fine from the council ranges which they can issue you with. Or bucks or something, I think. Uh, if we let him off the lead at any time, we see people coming, we put him back on. And he's a very gentle, friendly sort of dog. He occasionally gets a bit snarly with other dogs. But usually, he's friendly with people, and it's people pat him. And, that one. And I realise and I accept that the safety of the public is more important than the whim of a dog. But you see there's not many people out this morning. And so if I were my dog, I'd probably let him off the lead here. When I saw somebody coming and put him back on again. He, our dog Butch, he likes the idea of the dog park more than the actual dog park. And by that, what I mean is he likes to go to the dog park and make sure there's nobody else there so that he can sort of go around and collect the pee mail, as they say, and explore the place, see which other dogs have been there leave his message and move on. He doesn't like it when there's a lot of dogs and he doesn't like it when there's little dogs. He can't quite work out what they are. He knows that they're dogs of course, they smell like he does, but they're little. He can't work out why a dog He's little when he's big. Well, I say he's big. He's close to 40 kilos. I guess that's medium to big size for dogs. He's a cross, staffy, some sort. No one seems to know really what. We got him from the pound 
a good few years ago. Uh, he's brindle coloured and got lots of stripes and I delight in telling people who don't know that he's a Tasmanian tiger. Of course people most people know I'm having him on morning. But every now and again somebody does a double take and isn't quite sure. Nearly up to the garden bench, just up here, leaning on the top of this bit of a rise. I can hardly do it this morning. See the thickish frog down there over the river. That's just a kilometre from Conover. Over. So, we need about 800 metres from here uh, through all the switchbacks over the pedestrian bridge and then the kind of switchbacks, hairpin bends if you want to call back to Mars and Weir. My daughter-in-law, Alicia, uh, is the one who got me involved in parkrun originally and she'd been taking a bit of a break and doing some other gym work and gym challenges instead. But we went while I was there and uh, well, I said those were all up at some ridiculous time that started with a five for a park run that starts at seven. That's literally a ten minute walk from their house. She uh, made a comment about asking herself every time she got up at that time in the morning why the park run will go other running or what it go to the gym or whatever. She asked herself why she was up at stupid o'clock and doing such a thing and then uh, later on she said uh, she'd done the park run now she knows why she's up at stupid o'clock because she feels good after having done it and that's the point it's physically good for you of course because you're exercising and that's good for you uh, as I've talked about before, morning you know, running or any exercise, but certainly running has mental health benefits in terms of flooding your body, those feel good endorphins and stuff. I don't understand all the chemistry and stuff behind it. No, I don't think you need to, you just know that 
when you run, you're going to get this good feeling. And that's a good way to start your day. And if you're going to work, you know that however you get there with it, traffic of some sort, or some other way, the trains, walking, whatever, from then on, <coughs> there are going to be things every day that just set out to try you. Uh, so, if you can get a good start with a bit of exercise, that's good for you. Right. Almost at the end of the run. That's top of this track here. Go left. Hopefully you can see White Beast where I left it. No. Right there. Right I don't know if you can see that 8.7 kilometers 